India win the T20 World Cup in Barbados by remaining undefeated in the tournament and beating South Africa in an absolute thriller. It's heartbreak once again for the South Africans, but it's also the end of T20 international careers of Kohli, Rohit and Jadeja. We wrapped the World Cup before people knew it was even on. What's next for the world of cricket? And how many more World Cups are left in this decade? Dan Bredig is on the show to discuss where the next, uh, where next for this Australian T20 side, and what and what subscriptions we'll need to next catch the highlights. If I can talk, Jimmy Anderson's on the verge of his last ever Test match, and we ponder what's next for the English Test side. Hashtag Ask TDC questions if the County Championship is a good place for a first date. This episode is brought to you by Budgie Smuggler. Use the code GRADE for 23% off their underwear and apparel as Pezza and I are wearing right now, rocking these fresh hoodies, Mm. fresh, colourful, sublime hoodies. That code, G-R-A-D-E, 23% off at budgiesmuggler.com is available until the end of July. Previously, we've lied to you, we said, end of June. Guess what? One more episode, end of July. They've opened up the doors for one more month, Pezza. One more month, budgiesmuggler.com. Use the code GRADE for 23% off. How are you, Pezza? Mate, I'm, I'm, um, I'm flying. I'm flying at the moment. Yeah? Uh, in fact, I hope a lot of people can get out of Barbados. There's no joke there. There's a, there's a hurricane coming through. I hope people have, have managed to get yeah. in the air and, and get what's out. It called? What's the Safe. hurricane called? Beryl, Beryl, I think. Beryl, okay. Yeah, we've just we've uh, we've just spoken to Dan Bredick, who's on the show, uh, as, yep. as you mentioned, and uh, he let us know that it was Hurricane Beryl. I don't know if he was, if that's a stitch up. Beryl's an old babysitter of mine, yeah. Um, but uh, that's that's truly me digressing. Um, I'm flying because w- we've been talking global. We've been talking global cricket for the last, uh, I guess, the last, like through the World Cup. We've been doing the IPL before that. Things have, things have been global in nature, but I just want to like. You know, this this show ostensibly goes out to our Australian English audience. I know there's a lot of other people mm. watching this as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's long, it's indulgent, but I want to bring it back to the local uh, and just read you a headline. Okay. He goes, this goes all the way back to the charter of TGC. Okay. Okay. From there we can, we can flourish. But uh, Cargo Bar, the King Street Wharf Club, is back and it's even more Cargo Bar than before. Oh, fuck. It. Well, what does that mean? More, more cricketers in there. In the days before Tinder, Cargo Bar is where you went when you wanted to hook up. Yep. Now, after nearly 25 years, the Darling Harbour icon has relaunched with a fresh new look, ready to provide big nights and anxiety to the next gen of party goers. That's from Broadsheet. I'm so upset by this information because I didn't even know it had closed. Yeah. Like, that was actually my takeaway from it. I didn't realise it had gone away. Yes. That's how out of the game I am with it. And, in fact, out of the city that it's actually in, which probably helps in itself. But, um, hey, great news. Now, multi-story. Cargo opened. Oh, there was two stories. Well, was there a downstairs? Mm. Um, it's where some of my mates used to flick coins. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's like when he wanted to go to hook up. Oh, I did some shit other than that. You know, it opened, um, it opened for the Sydney Olympics in 2000. That's when Cargo yeah. actually opened. Speaking of which, we'll be covering the Olympics here on TJC. Uh, there is actually no cricket at the Olympics this year. Just to make that clear, yes, there are other events being happen, uh, being being happening. Being happy. Tell you what, I've had a hell of a start to the show. Start to the That's show. Right, Sean Whoa, Connery's okay. here. <laughs> Little piece of trivia around the Sydney Olympics. Here we uh, go. Which, which storied member of the New South Wales cricket team around that time went into the village and hooked up with Misty Hyman? That's it. I'm not answering that question. Ian Thorpe. I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> what an athlete. An athlete. Okay, you need. So to, we are doing the Olympics. Yeah, that's true. And now you need you need to tell me more about that later. Hey, uh, great news here on TGC. Now this is actually our last. Show. <laughs> great news. It's our last show. <laughs> <laughs> this last is day of school stuff here, is it? Well, I think so. Yeah, mm. for my brain it is, which apparently checked out last night. Um, this is our last show that we've been doing for that we, that we will do for uh, this World Cup, of course, and for the next little while, uh, based on cricket, anyway. Um, after doing. Uh, of course, the Australian summer, yeah. uh, the the fifty over World Cup before then. Yeah, hang on, what, what what's in the last how, eighteen months? How, far, Bordiga- back, okay, how the, far back does it go? The Australian summer against South Africa, Bordigavaska yeah. in India. So that's you're in February twenty twenty three. Then we did the IPL. Yeah. Then we did the Ashes yes. in the UK. Of course, two of the UK. Mm. Then when we came home, it was a fifty over World Cup. Yeah, a few in months, India. A few months in between. A couple yeah. months in between there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe two. Fifty over World Cup. 
And then the there Australian was the summer. Australian summer against West Indies, West Indies and Pakistan. Pakistan. That's right. Yep. And then, of course, into so New Zealand. The, the New Zealand series, which yep. we went and got, saw, our, saw our friends in Christchurch, then into the IPL, yep. then into the T20 World Cup mm. in, uh, in America and uh, the Caribbean, of course. And now, hey, here we are at the end of this extraordinary long run. It's, a block, it's a block of nine months. Yeah. Nine months of, uh, and you know, we decry sports saturation, but mm. um, I, I, I suspect this will be pleasurable news for a lot of our viewers. You won't be saturated Thank by fuck. TGC for at least 17 days before we start with the Olympics. Now, there'll be a, so, there'll be a small subsect of people who are like, well, I actually would like more. Hey, good news. This week is the Hall of Fame week on Patreon. Oh. The Hall of Fame week, if you sign up to Patreon, is five or ten bucks US a month. You're going to get the Hall of Fame for the last 100 episodes on Patreon. Hashtag Ask TDC Fridays for the past just under two years, I suppose. Um, our, our, our finest questions, our best work, some mm. of our loosest riffing is all available in the next three days. One hour show is coming out tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. And then episode 201 of Hashtag Ask TGC Fridays available at Patreon patreon.com forward slash great cricketer sign up as i said five or ten bucks us a month it starts tomorrow the first hour for the hall of fame patrons mm. excited chatter is abound chat is flooding the live chats popping off there community has been built over the last four years of patreon work but the hall of fame mark two is for the last two years of work mark yeah gillette yeah. uh pa the patreon is really the lifeblood of the venture of TGC, you know, without it, we don't have the freedom to um, be loose with a lot of other shit that we do or say no to a lot of things that come in. And uh, the first time we did the Hall of Fame, which was after one, uh, the first 100 episodes, yeah, it right. was extremely popular with people. It was just a, it was a best of. And uh, we just did one hour, right? And a lot of people just very much enjoyed the, you know, cumulative effect of that. And so this time we've just uh, expanded it to like, it's, it's three hours. It's three one-hour episodes, right? Hall yep. of Fame week. The red carpet's rolled out. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you've ever wondered what goes on, um, it is it is where we're most probably honest in ourselves yeah. and ashamed. It's just, it's the stuff you're probably not sending to family. Yeah, that's you right. Hope, and you're hoping doesn't yeah doesn't make its way, and yeah. then sometimes it does, and then you're in the you know then you're at, at school pickup, and mm -hmm. people looking at you weird and that. <laughs> Uh, that's the st that's the stuff you're getting. So you have options available. Li like literally, if you want to, you can just sign up and cancel sign straight away, cat. and you're going to get it for a month anyway. So uh, you know if that's what you want to do, yeah, or you can sign up and stick around, just see what's going mm. on, because that's the only place we're going to be talking about cricket for probably the next six months, Pedro, until yeah. the border of Vasco. We haven't spoken about that. Oh, Patreon, Patreon doesn't stop. Doesn't stop. Yeah, doesn't stop. So that's where you can find us uh, there for the next little while. Um, so please do come along, and of course the Olympics will be doing the show, which will be available here. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's talk about India winning the World Cup, Pezza, because that happened yesterday. No, it didn't happen two days ago. What day is it? I don't know. Exactly. Well said. Bridgetown final, Barbados. India batted first. They made one seventy six for seven. Virat Kohli top score was seventy six off fifty nine balls. He was player of the match. South Africa. They finished 169 for eight off their 20 overs. Jaspreet Boomer was the player of the series with his 15 wickets. It was Hardik Pandya who had the best bowling figures, three for 20 uh, in the final, taking two for nine in that final over, defending 16 to win the game for his nation. Um, here's what Rohit said after the game, uh, just about like how close it was towards the end. Now, many people would already know, of course, consuming this show, they know what's happened to the game. Essentially, it came down to 27 off 28. Let's just call it 30 off 30 mm. uh, with six wickets in hand for South Africa. They couldn't get it done. Uh, Rohit said about those final stages after the game, he said, the message was very loud and clear to everyone that until the last ball of the game is bowled, the game is not over. Wow. My job as captain is to make everyone believe that, whether we're ahead in the game or behind. We wanted to keep fighting because moments like this will never come again. Now, Markram said after the game, it's not the first game of cricket that's been lost with the team needing 30 off 30. India are allowed to bowl well. They're allowed to feel well. They're allowed to go from that position to a position of strength. Of course, South Africa ended up losing the game. Uh, many players on the field in tears. Uh, Aidan Markram said again after the game, he said, I don't think I can put my emotions into words just yet, to be honest. It's tough. This group is a great bunch of people. In my opinion, they deserve really good things to go their way. I had a really good feeling about this competition before we came here. And as the competition went on, that feeling got stronger and stronger. It's pretty tough to deal with now, but it's sport. At the end of the day, someone's going to win. Someone's going to lose. And we'll try to use it to fire us up for future events. Um, I'm just going to continue for one second. Rohit said, this has to be the greatest time. I can say that. Uh, he's still in the press conference after the game. It's only because how desperately I wanted to win this. So all the runs, 
all the runs that I've scored in all these years. I think it does matter, but I'm not big on stats and all of that. I think winning games for India, winning trophies for India, that is what I look forward to all the time. And having this now right beside me probably has to be, I don't know, honestly, I don't know if it's the greatest or what, but it's definitely one of the greatest. I can say that. So a, uh, a wide ranging of emotions there from two captains. Uh, and that sort of sums it up um, what happened in the, the last few stages. But it was the two best teams of the tournament playing against each other, both undefeated, both could have won the game. One won the game, one lost the game. It's, uh, is it as simple mm. as that? I really think it is. I, I, I truly think it is. And we just we just overlay our own uh, like human narrative to it. Like, mm. Can you conceive of a way that either team could have lost the game? So I'm talking you can get smacked or you can lose in a close one where people wouldn't say that the losing team choked. No, no, but it, it that's, just, that's internet brain, I think, like... Yeah, it's a dumb brain. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I've been thinking about this further because uh, I, I just, I, I just thought South Africa were great all tournament, you know, and I think they and they won a lot of close games as well, and they got themselves into a great position to win due to like a monumental knock from Heinrich Klaas and taking down the two best spinners in the competition that no one had been able to come close to taking down, mm-hmm. and uh, unfortunately they were in a situation South Africa West. Yes, it was 30, it was thirty off thirty, but this isn't the IPL. This isn't like oh, we'll do it in two hits. Yeah, you know, sixes are, are tough to come by. If class wasn't batting, and uh, they're in a scenario where like you, you lose one wicket, and the bowlers essentially have got to go and get thirty for thirty in ESPN documentary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, off, I like them. off 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 Boomer, Ashdeep, Hardik Pandya. It's always going to be hard. Like, it's going to be a hard thing to do. Yes, there's there's moments where you expect a senior player to knock down the junior player, South Africa and India. Uh, it, do, it doesn't happen. Uh, I do think it's more credit to India. Yes, like there's a there are small moments where South Africa don't step up in that critical moment where a couple of those players don't. But I, I, I agree that it's sport. And it's not as fun to talk this way. It's not mm. as fun... You know, it, it's it's way more fun to go like, well, there's obviously some inherent historical psychological <laughs> weakness within yeah. a, within an entire group of people that stretches back through history and DNA, and mm. it begun, you know, at Robin Island. You know, look, I mean, <laughs> Arjen yeah. Robin, I'm referring Rob to course, when, yeah. when he joined Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, so, I I I just thought it was a very good game of sport. Uh, wow, <laughs> but, okay, <laughs> and uh, I think that. I think that uh, that India had enormous psychological pressure on them. There mm-hmm. is a moment in the game where you're like, they are, they sure have they fucked this again? Yeah. Uh, where actually their players step up mm-hmm. and bowl well. Uh, Bumra is essentially the Bradman uh, of T20 cricket. Uh, the the sadness from a South African perspective, you know, for me, is that. Um, Unlike India, you know, South Africa's international game um, has, it's not controversial to say, you know, it has, it, it has been, it continues to be structurally um, crippled and in the po- at the point of degradation where you are entitled to wonder if they're able to keep pace with bigger boys <coughs> or mm. boy down the track. Was this a rare opportunity for them? Whereas uh, that, that has, um, you know, not come to fruition. Whereas... You know, India is like a dynasty waiting to happen. Yep. You know, it's it's like have the damn walls broken now. You mm. know, the the, the the cliched monkey off the back. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, has the wave finally broken the damn wall, and now it's just going to be a like a glut of trophies that now that they found a blueprint and a way mm. of doing it. You know, if India did not get it done this time. The next World Cup is eight minutes away. It's already started. As we say, it's already started. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you, you know that it. just the, you know, by virtue of probability, the, it'll, it'll get done. Like, it, yeah. it will get done. Yes. Whereas with South Africa, it's like they probably have to wait longer. There's been a few false dawns with the Asian century 2.0, 3.0, mm, et cetera. That's right, 3.1. Uh, <laughs> yeah, patch yeah, added. yeah, Asian century pro uh, yeah. it came out. <laughs> that's right, X. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> mini uh, was one. <laughs> um, but, uh, you yeah, know, there's obviously a few key figures retiring here. But, uh, yeah, just uh, with South Africa as well, just staying on them, obviously they sent um, a, a really weak side to New Zealand. Um, who got pumped over there. Uh, and that was hugely controversial, but they put all their eggs in the SA20 basket. And this was almost a reward for doing that. And it might be like a, a, a looking glass into the future for other countries, perhaps, going down that path. But, you know, this South African side, I think the, the core of the group, the age, 
they're all between 28 and 32. So you're thinking they're right in their primes right now. I think like, so Quentin the Cock is unlikely to go around again. I think the suggestion that he, he may, he may well step down. Um, I don't even know how old Quinton the Cock is. I, I thought he was younger than that, but um, I did read from uh, for Dos Mundar that that mm. was uh, suggested. Mm-hmm. The core of the group, though, is right in their prime right now. So the next World Cup is in a couple of years. Do you think there'd be very good chance again? Have you got it there? How old he is? No, I'm, oh, no I was actually right. looking at his retirement. Um, oh, okay. He's, he's talked about it a bit, but he hasn't. Uh, okay, got it. Right, mm. right, right. Um, anyway, yeah, it was just uh, it's just. It's just another one of those weird things where South Africa took them right right to the edge. You know, I said this yesterday on the on the review on YouTube that Heinrich Klaassen hits the ball for six uh, that he ends up nicking uh, off Hardik Pandya caught behind by Rishab. That goes for six and it probably is done. There probably was one hit away from actually breaking the back of it. But that did, it didn't happen, you know. Hardik Pandya outskilled mm-hmm. the batter. The batter fell for it. Failed Risha, to execute. Risha, Risha Punt sat down for five minutes before that as well to end the momentum once again. Yeah. You know, strategic and and excellent. Another masterclass. Masterclass. Um, I mentioned before about uh, Kohli, Rohit and Jadeja all retiring from T20s, but uh, Rohit was speaking on Rahul Dravid. Is obviously, that was his last game as coach of India as he is now uh, past the uh, the legal age of working in that role. <laughs> is he really? He's 60 plus, Rahul <laughs> Dravid. Uh, uh, isn't, that, isn't that why he's stepping down? Oh, I, I thought he passed the age. No, he, he can't he be can't 60 be, plus. Shastri 62, so. Yeah. No, that guy, that guy can't so be right Rahul looking fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's why he was stepping yeah. down. Yeah. But obviously not. He's, he's, nah. he's, anyway, Rahul, speaking on Rahul Dravid said, uh, more than any of us, I think he deserves that trophy. Uh, what he has done for yeah. Indian cricket for the past 20, 25 years, I think this is the only thing that was missing in his cabinet. I'm very happy from all of us on behalf of the entire team that we could actually do this for him. You saw how proud he was and how excited he was. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool to see uh, Rahul Dravid like go mental basically for such a man of like, obviously the wall uh, yeah. as a start uh, to be you know uh, go through what they all went through you know on uh, for the the fifty over World Cup to come out the other side of that and win this uh, win this World Cup uh, it's uh, it's nice to see especially for a, a similarly such a nice man like Rahul Dravid right these you know and so I completely agree you know he's a man of um, you know, Bengaluru sensibilities, mm. demure, reserved, Integrity. Um, polite, um, uh, intelligent, you know, uh, like uh, when we talked to Venkatesh Prasad as well, you know, it's, it's a, that's the culture down there. And he, uh, you know, Rahul Dravid is a, a rare person at the top level of sport who uh, doesn't seek the curtain call, you know, and uh, even though his record would demand it. And uh, you, you could even see the trophy presentation where, uh, Ro- Rohit Sharma um, does the robot uh, to come and uh, receive it, which was funny yeah. and good, <laughs> yeah. and a couple of other people on stage as well. Uh, to, I think he's just stiff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He hadn't done, so, done a, he hadn't done a cool he's down. He's been playing a lot of cricket. <laughs> 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 he forgot to wear his skins, uh, his, his compression yeah. underwear. Uh, and, and Rahul Dravel was just um, hanging out back with the staff, you know, just yeah. just watching. Uh, it's got it's kind of cool and it's it's rare. Uh, so yeah, very cool to see, and you can you could see when the players, uh, you know, sort of commandeered him against his will to to toss him up and down there, as in in the air. Um, I don't know what they did. <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear, was there a salad to tossing afterwards? <laughs> salad tossing? What I wouldn't give. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> How much love they have for him as well, and it's you know yeah. things just spin on such fine margins. I mean, I look, I, I'm not I, look. I haven't been privy to BCCI discussions about. Uh, it's not Roy from Roy Nash. Yeah, that's I'll right. Let you know. well, I was talking to Jay uh, last week. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I'm not really. Sh- I, I'm not really sure the the trigger or driver for Rahul Dravid's exit from the post, other mm. than it was you know unanimous and announced that there would be a new coach, uh, but. If you know, it's just amazing. If Rahul Dravid doesn't win this World Cup, he probably uh, has. You know, will receive mixed reviews. You know, on his coaching yeah, tenure. Yeah, yeah. And but uh, he he finishes with the trophy and mm. uh, and fair play, like well played to them. Uh, I think that you know a lot of the a lot of the <coughs> Indian. I mean, it's cool to hear that from Rohit Sharma, for example. I b- believe him. You know, we often uh, stereotype. The Indian cricketer as being stats hungry, loving a stick, scoring bulk hundreds to the uh, like exclusion of team performance. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'd believe him that he's like, you know, 
it's really about trophies. Um, now you can't trust somebody who says that because all batters actually just want to score. Yeah, like, it runs, it's yeah. like is that a sort of yeah. runs in losing team sort of yeah. thing? I don't know. Yeah. Um, that'll go down well. But um, <laughs> I mean, the truth is, what we've seen is like, um, yeah, all those Indian boys are, you know, they'll they'll be stoked, and then you have to be good to come together to win a World Cup. You have to come together as a collective. They did. They were great through the tournament. They fielded better than anybody else. They stepped up in the big moments. They, you know, were the best across the phases. They've got the Bradman of T Twenty cricket. Mm. They're thoroughly the best team in the World Cup. They deserve to win. And then we've seen a, uh, you know, a, a, like a very, like just a always remarkable and extraordinary outpouring of emotion across India from its fans because they've found the light at the end of the tunnel. You mm. know, that, that ICC trophy has been a, an obsession uh, for the country, you know, who has been waiting for uh, an expression of its, uh, of its dominance to manifest. And uh, they've, Gosh, they've come close mm. for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Humorously, if you're not them, uh, but uh, very funny, you know. Well, successive World Test Championship finals, ODI World Cup at home, mm -hmm. uh, t you know, 2022 World Cup um, in in the semis against England, mm -hmm. and uh, 2019 50 over World Cup 50, in New Zealand. Ex ex exactly, you know, like and the balance of probabilities, they probably get one or two of those trophies. They they're regularly the number one ranked test side. You mm -hmm. know, they always go into the World Test Championship final ranked one. They get their home dressing room, etc. Uh, they are the they've won more big series away from home against big nations than others have. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're generally the best going around, but yep. they didn't have that thing to mm. cling to to say, see, I got the medal, mm. Daddy. Yeah, the validation, you know? yeah, exactly. But yeah. So it so it came. It came, you know, at 10.30 in the morning, uh, Caribbean time, <laughs> but prime time. Yeah. Like, uh, it, it came, and uh, um, I'm sure a lot of people did as well, that they were dancing on the streets. Uh, yeah. th there's, you know, the... I can only imagine if you're an Indian fan how many things you're watching and listening to. Like, when you take oh, wins, you just want to consume all of it. everything. Oh, drink it all in. Gluttonously. Yeah. Feel sick. Yeah. Uh, so Strap a fee bag on, just munch away oh, at, the, at the glorification of your team. Yeah, get oh. the old salt lick, go for a run, come back, feed bag, over and over and over oh, again you go. Yes, get in the workbench, chop, 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 let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that, yeah. the, the, to the victor go the spoils, exactly right? right. You know, get upset online, conspiracies, skies catch, great, yeah. people aren't graceful. It's a great time. Mm -hmm. It's a great time to be an Indian fan. Can someone just can someone just lay out for me? Like could, <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> can someone just lay out for me the rules about the catch? No one no one's actually addressed it. Can no, someone just clear. say it? Be clear. We're not you yeah. know we're not talking about the uh where, whether the rope was touched or not. It was where the rope was placed. Yeah, I just want to know like there's the rules. Can someone just yeah. like lay it out for me? I mean I I guess I gotta do my own research, yeah. but I'm maybe dumb. just where the rope is is where the rope is. We look at the MCC. Yeah. yeah. The the like the, the the indentation of grass appeared to be where the rope had been. Because usually, like usually, when this, when, usually when you think of something and like no one else is talking yeah, about it, it's like, oh, I just, I just missed something. I just got it wrong. Chances we are wrong. Oh yeah, no, 80%, no, I want 80, that. 80, can someone just, can someone just lay it out? Yeah. and just say, explain what the situation mm. and is, and not, and not in cultural terms. Like, like, yeah. okay, obviously, I appreciate yeah. now that this has been yeah. said. We're just like, listen, is a uh, the rope being was the rope n not in the right place? Yeah, but like, so obviously, you know, ninety percent of responses to this will be like. White sandpaper, yeah. graceless in racist. defeat, racist. Yeah. And, you know. To you the victory go the spoils. To the victory go the spoils <laughs> in that. But also, is that yeah. can somebody um, just deal with the substance of the question yeah. in um, material, like um, non prejudicial yeah. terms? And, 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 and just, so, so just to disabuse yeah. us of like. The rope isn't where the rope was. Yeah. His, his foot's past where the rope was. Right. And do you have to do you have to be on the ground when you catch the ball when you re-enter the field if you last? Like I, they, they, this is why no, I'm this is why it's a dumb sport. No, so I, yeah. I think I saw something which is like no, you have to put your foot back into. I don't know. Oh, no, I don't think you have to be back in. No. They don't have to. You just be in the What air. about that Nisa catch a few years ago? Do you remember that? BBL? Oh, he was like... He took it way over and he, he just yeah. jumped in the air. Then oh, jumped yeah, up, that's then, right. Then that's right. on the ground. Yeah, okay. So not that bit. No. Oh, that That's bit, that bit's fine, yeah, and also okay. like it, I'm I'm purely focused on like I th there's an indentation of grass where the rope yeah. was, yes, and it had moved back, yes, or it was not in that place. And anymore. I think it was actually a South African player that had moved it back. Oh, I, I didn't I know that. Think side it, of like, that might have happened, right? Yeah, but how still, do we know this? Well, anyway, I've said just a the point is where's the yeah. um where's the boundary? Yeah. Is the bound look if the if the rule is the boundary is just, just simply where, where the where the the, 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 the padding the Toblerone triangle Toblerone is. Then play on, yeah. disabused. Yeah, 
eighty percent. Can someone 90, just, can someone just answer the question? Chance. Yeah, we're being dumb. No, that's fine. Hear that. I'm fine. And racist and sandpaper. Take that as red. Take it as red. To the victor go the spoils. <laughs> it's been said. <laughs> Damn it! I wish we won. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. Well, can't win them all. Ah, uh, you can't win them all. Win as them. we said last week. Hey, can you? Uh, do you get off on uh, retirements from specific formats? <laughs> can you? <laughs> Because because oh, because uh, these, these are these are three uh, format players. So right, right, right. We're going right, to right, right. say some farewells to Coley. Oh yeah, Rohit and Jadu. Yeah, uh, sure. You know, yeah, I can get it. Can get off. You on can it. get it going. Yeah. I, I I mean I got yeah. I think it's like um, you know, like you don't want to sledge posthumously. Like uh, we're nah. now in a world we're now in a world where like because there's three formats, you yeah. get three farewells. You get a big old want. victory lap. Well, you get a couple. No, I'm retiring from this one. I'm still knocking around in, in two others. Yeah. In colours. Well, Dave Warner's been going for about a year and a bit. Yeah, that's the thing. They seem to, like, I did detect some sort of, uh, you know, uh, furrowed brow from certain quarters <laughs> that uh, <Yeah>. his, because <laughs> that's how I talk. Yeah. Which quarters? <laughs> certain, certain quarters. Furrowed brows in certain quarters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, say yeah. no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, you know, his, uh, he, he, his, Farewell from the public was rather muted, you know, which which can happen when you just sort of uh, you sort of limp out against Afghanistan, or you limp yeah, out yeah, after yeah. Bangladesh fails to beat Afghanistan yeah, at like three at, in the morning yeah, or whatever, at eleven fifteen yeah. or Wednesday. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but I would I would also say like already been a lot of chat about David Warner's general farewell from Australian cricket. I yeah, think. like I do back the public there. I think there's a lot of areas of David Warner's career where where I I think he's got a lot of pretty fair points uh, to make. But um, on this fact, it's like no, you, you, you had a fair, oh, you don't. had a farewell. You're at the SCG. Yeah. Oh, no, I know it's yeah. test cricket and stuff. It's like yeah. in Australia, it's just like you just you you you're finished. You yeah. you finished. Come on, and, come on. And we come did on. it, and we clapped, and it was you know play on for everybody else. With this, Sokoli, Rohit, Jadu, they've retired from T20 international internationals. Cricket. They'll still play the IPL. Right, so farewell to the format for those guys. Yeah. Internationals and they they're not yes. so they're not farewelling ODI cricket necessarily, definitely not Test cricket. It's just one of the three formats yep. they're farewelled from. Yep. Okay. Fair, play, well played, guys. Ben Stokes did that a couple of times, then he came back. Came back for the ODI side, didn't he? Came back for the ODI World Cup. Stopped playing ODIs and he came mm. back. Okay. So I'm saying it might, might not be over. Yeah. Yeah. It just takes the, a conversation, doesn't well, it? Well, the T20 World Cup is before the next ODI World Cup. Mm. Well, what if, you know, Gorty, like, you know, Gorty Gambier gets yeah, the coaching GG. gig and then he and Coley chat. I can't see like that happening, but... Yeah. <laughs> Gorty, I want another gig. Ah, yeah. all good. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you again? <laughs> but, yeah, no, I'll, hey, fl- flowers to the boys, for sure, in case it's getting misinterpreted, racist white sandpaper stuff. <laughs> Victor got the spoils. Victor got the spoils, say what you like. <laughs> Let's wrap up the World Cup. Let's okay. wrap it up. Um, how are we gonna? How are we gonna remember this World Cup? I think you and I remember it for everything that, like TJC has given us in our lives. You know, mm. like going to the US and and uh, being in New York and meeting Coley and doing the Broadway show and uh, seeing cricket in America and being at the Grand Prairie for USA Canada for that first game, meeting the people outside the stadium, talking to some American voices, and that's all, that's all they are to us, just American voices, <laughs> empty vessels, but they sound funny to the ear. Oh, it's going to go off rails, isn't it? Um, no, like, you know, and, and seeing what cricket meant to them and, and how important it was for the World Cup to be in their community, yeah. connection to home. Um, that I think that'll be our experience of it, right? Like, that'll be yeah. our memories of the World Cup. But you know what? That's probably not that relatable to lots of other you people. Suge- are you suggesting that not everyone shares our experience? You know, that the world isn't just revolving around us and others have different points of view with the way they see things. Is that you? Is that what you're trying to put forward? I'll be keeping that information to myself. Just keep it to yourself on the show, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the abiding um, Joe Biden uh, memory will be cricket in America uh, and what that was. Uh, and, mm-hmm. yeah, well, obviously we had the privilege of going and, and seeing the novelty of it on the ground. Uh, I think that there has been a lot of um, conversation without any real, uh, like, uh, like, mid, like substantial kind of verification about w- why it was there. A lot of people have, you know, um, put things forward. Uh, I, I mean, f- for me, the sense that I got around cricket in America, as novel as it was, like, like, so, so sorry. Let me let me walk that back. People have said things like, 
you know, it's a great opportunity is the word diaspora, you know, like it's a, uh, it's a, yeah, yeah, South Asian diaspora. Let's get that market going or whatever. Smashing uh, on Wordle maybe, this past month. Yeah, that, that's all true. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, oh, cricket's heading to the Olympics. It's part of a, part of cricket's growth strategy, et cetera. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. Um, you know, uh, India v Pakistan, New York, that's how cool is that or whatever. Um, I don't know. Like, uh, can the US come through? I mean, for me, like the sense that I got was that like, and we see this all around the world, just given where America sits in people's consciousness, and this is probably true of us in our business, like, you know, doing business in America is never not appealing to people. You know, the home of capitalism contains, you know, wonder and opportunity that is, is scarcely available anywhere else. And mm-hmm. to my mind, having walked around that stadium in New York and we, we had the opportunity to go to uh, not just the press box but, like, the, the hospitality section, which was, you know, largely, um, uh, you know, power, um, like, like kingmakers and, and powerful insiders of um, Indian cricket. To me, it looked like a... Um, and also caterers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're right. I forgot the caterers. Um. Yeah, that's. Uh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um. Sorry. No, no, no. That was right to do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just felt like. Uh. <laughs> India was taking everything that it is uh, and it's um, the the entire vibe of the nation and where it's going and its growth and its uh, ambitions and aims and its, its global context. It was taking it to America and planting the flag. Cricket's one of its best exports and it was just taking it there and planting the flag and going, have a look at this, yeah. you know? Yeah. India v. Pakistan um, – You've mentioned this off air, the drone shot of the um, of the Manhattan skyline yeah, there, yeah, yeah. and saying, hey, "We are here, we are coming. The nation is coming, mm-hmm. uh, and we we are growing." That that was the vibe that I got, and I think that we've seen not just in cricket but in other sports, say with rugby league here at home, there is a halo effect to doing business in America. <laughs> and don't forget the caterers. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of caterers. It is true. I, know, I also yeah. will remember that a lot of there was no toilets up in the uh, the press box, so you actually had a lot of the famous people had to walk downstairs to um, go over Weris Creek uh, in the uh, <laughs> go over Weris in the uh, Demountables yeah. with the punters. You know what I mean? I saw Ricky Ponting there. Did you? Yeah, oh yeah, huh. having a Weris. <laughs> Leslie Kiss. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, so my takeaway from the, <laughs> from, from, from the show, Go on. my takeaway from the World Cup is that T Twenty cricket is um, is the only way to grow the game. Sorry, is it the only way? I haven't thought of other ways. It is clearly the, it's way, the way the to, game will be grown. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I have to. I have to reconcile with that in myself in that like T20 cricket has always lived in a short-term sugar hit, hit and giggle. None of this means anything um, manner. Like, like that's, 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 that's just how I've always treated it. Also like I barely played it. I think when I was, it, it started to get brought into great cricket my last couple of years. So I would have mm. played, I played a bit in the UK, but I would play like maybe 10 games mm. of league um, T20 cricket. So I probably understand it less. Yeah, I mate smashed it. Yeah, I yeah. played for Australia. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> um, when I've been to the Big Bash and when I've been to T20 games, it's um, I'm just drawn to it less, I suppose. And I just think about what the Ashes has meant to me in my lifetime. Like just thinking about when I'm really young and being allowed to stay up late at 8.30 to watch the first session with my parents – thinking about going to my first ever games at the SCG, going to watch Ashes Test matches. I even think about last year in 2023 about the catering. <laughs> <laughs> about in 2023. 
and how fucking great a series that was. And I think many people in Australia and the UK will feel the same way as I do. Now, when I go because of this job and like we are so lucky to have been around the world now to see different forms of cricket and see how people enjoy different cricket matches. Mate, there, there are so many people in the US that we just saw who lived there or had traveled there or had flown into country, into states to, to be in there that were so happy and were so excited. And it, it, there is no question that my feelings about how good test cricket is and basically the ashes, because not all test cricket's good. And in fact, most of it's junk <laughs> and it goes on for fucking ages. And we'll talk about the women's test match in, in oh. Chen Chennai in a second. Two on the nose. Nah, no, play on. I have to reconcile my relationship with like how to how to get more people into cricket and like what's what's good for the game because quite clearly way more people like this format and it's way more accessible to a whole new group of people that never really liked cricket before. Like, but is that your job in life? I mean, like or, no. you're just saying old and out of touch. You can just like what you like. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I, I since I've, when did I've, it become everybody's job to like grow and promote the game? Yeah, that's a good. You can point. just like what you like. Yeah, no, but but I, but I'm saying like I'm growing to like teach quantum cricket more. The more the more I see it, the more I understand it. The more wow. I, <laughs> yeah, wow, damn it, I like something. I've revealed that I like something in the show. Damn it. Do you think our uh, like a um, natural like inherent reluctance to embrace T20 cricket is because the format came along when Australia was the absolute giant of everything? So just you're just crows feeding like what's this fucking shit? We'll, we'll, we'll just win the real stuff, the stuff that we're good at that we get our entire self. Yeah, but out of. but he, but here's the thing: like the 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 more that T20 cricket just grows and grows, like T20 cricket will will become what cricket is. Like yeah. it's like oh. I, I, how how in twenty years time is Test cricket resurrected where all the nations are playing? I just I don't I don't mm. see in as recently as twenty years time that that is going to be the case. There's going to mm. be more T20 World Cups. There's going to be more franchises. That's mm. what cricket is. And like I I. Multi-format ashes. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, I get to go to India, Pakistan, New York, and I'm there and I'm enjoying the game, and it's fucking awesome. And you're there in a stadium in the middle of um, in the middle of uh, Central Park is where it was. Yeah. In the middle of Manhattan. Yeah. That's right. Um, and you're like, no, this is fucking There's awesome. Trump <laughs> exiting the courthouse. He'll be the president. <laughs> Who are you talking to, Pezza? <laughs> no one. Yeah, yeah, no, play on. Um, you know, like – can you imagine if they took the Ashes to America? Like, who's going? You know, like, I mean, that's that's sort of getting into, like, the, the population economic side of things. But, like, what's what's the point of having an Ashes that we really care about once every four years in the country where we can see it in our prime time? Like, what's – fuck, it was – you know, it's good. I really like it. But more people like this shorter format. I, I don't know. I think that's my takeaway, and that's how I'm remembering this T20 World Cup. The more I see it, the more I'm like – this, this is the future. This is how more countries get into it. This is how the game, the game grows. This is how um, you get better teams from different countries. That's, that's, that's better for me. I'm coming around to the idea that that's better and more enjoyable for me to watch than a couple of good Ashes series every four years, every two years, I suppose. <clears throat> so I've just I've dumped a whole lot of information on you that... I'm surprised you say you, you've, you enjoy it more than the Ashes series. I not I wouldn't say I enjoy it more than the Ashes series, but like oh, I think That's what you just said. Well, did I, I? No, you might not have. Um, I've got comprehension problems. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm saying that I think that this T twenty World Cup or T twenties can be better for the game than me having a couple of good Ashes series every oh, couple of years. I mean I think it's uh like take it as as read that that's the direction of the game. That's the vehicle through which the game will be grown yeah. and through which it's uh you know, commerce will be done. Uh, because it's eminently packageable for TV, you know. I, I think if there's anything that this T20 World Cup shows is a concentration of the idea that, uh, you know, sport is primarily a TV show, you know, look at when it's on, um, look at where the, the money is increasingly coming from. I think one of the questions that comes out of it, we do talk to Dan Bredig about this as well, is, you know, where is Australia on this you know, mm -hmm. because Australia does appear still to be a test playing uh, first country, and like I, that's that's what I like, you know. But uh, does that work in a global context over the long term? I, I, at the moment, we're just we've just got foot in both camps mm. um, be, because we've got some good players. But I don't know structurally whether that's going to survive. I mean, just to back up your point, he goes. There's a lot of people have reported this 
uh, over the last week or so, a FICA uh, survey, so Federation of in, uh, International Cricketers Association, I think that's it. So uh, they they did a survey uh, of players uh, from every major cricket nation barring uh, India and Pakistan, I think. So Australia, England, New Zealand, South Africa, Bangladesh, West Indies, actually goes up to 13 nations, men and women, um, and there's about 330 professional players. And um, uh, some, some of the findings just go to show the rise of T20 cricket as a um, format of prestige and importance for right, players. Right. Uh, so um, in 2019, um, 85% of those of players viewed the 50 over World Cup as the most important. In 2024, and, so, and sorry, and 15% for T20 World Cup. So 85% thought 50 over better. Then, uh, then the other 15 thought 20 overs was more important mm-hmm. in 2019. Right. 2024, uh, it is 50% of players who think the ODI showpiece is the most important. And then it says 35% favouring as T20 equivalent. So some maths went wrong somewhere along the line. But uh, <laughs> And then uh, in 2019, 82% of players picked Test Cricket as the most important format, and it's only 48% now. Uh. But, uh, that is a, uh, you know, uh. it still means it's the most important uh, today. Yeah. But... The trend is a – and the swing is is gargantuan. And how does that get rectified, you know, if, if it's, it's – No one is trying to rectify it. No, no, it's not rectified. You know, exactly, I don't yeah. know what Australia is trying to do within mm. it. We've talked about a T20 reset for a very long time. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you're right. It's another, it's another example of what, you know, the growth of cricket looks like and how it's happening, you know, and it, that it's happening through T20 cricket. I think the flow on question is, you know, where is Australia on this? You know, what is – is Australia on – Board with this? Yeah. How does it, uh, you know, condition its fans to uh, to to get on this train that you know that everybody else is on? Rohit Sharma, I think he had this quote before. He describes this moment as the greatest of his career. T mm. Twenty cricket. He's played all three formats. Mm. Anyway, um, I can but, ju- I can just see a world where like. The Ashes and just talk about last year's Ashes. It was fuck. It was so good. Yeah. Like you're just watching. You're watching every ball. It's actually something that's stopped me from looking at my phone for, wow. for overs at a time. That's how gripping it was. And I think many people felt like that who were invested in mm. those two teams. <clears throat> Not many people feel like that. <laughs> I, I can see a world where there's a league that goes on the summer and it's the Big Bash and maybe there's a couple of New Zealand teams as well, the Super Bash and the Big Bash collide and it's on for two and a half or goes maybe even three months, I don't know, in the summer from November to January or whatever it is, maybe it's smaller than that. And there's packed stadiums and people are really into it and we're producing these great cricketers that are, com- that are going to compete. What cricketers? Great cricketers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Great cricketers that are going to compete in World Cups against all these other nations that are going to come in and define the game as well. That, I think, is a longer-term, better vision for the game. Not that it even matters what I care about. I'm just thinking, like, that's where it's going to go. So how, how does my team that I like, because I was born in it, compete against these other nations? And I don't think it's by playing a couple of tests against the West Indies at the Gabba where Shamar Joseph uh, wins the game for the Windies every uh, decade. <laughs> I don't think that's the way to move forward. But, you know, there's also recency bias because once the Test match starts for the Border Gavaskar series, India always play well when they come out to Australia. And I'll think, like, nah, actually Test is... Uh, yeah, could you this, see this, yourself at the end of the Ashes series last year going, like, I just under- I just think T20 is the, the, is the game through which to... Uh, yeah, it's a vehicle through which to grow the game. You know, there perhaps yeah. there's some recency bias, but I, I, yeah. look, I, I think it's it's very clear that uh, the future is T20 cricket yes. as it relates to those in power in the game. You know, whether you like that or not, I personally, you know, if I woke up tomorrow and they're like, "Test cricket's a way forward," I'd be like, "Well, you know, I don't know how long that'll last when people <laughs> like it, but I like it." Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that's awesome. And you know, uh, yeah, we're we're fickle here. Uh, if Australia wins the T20 World Cup, actually, probably having the same conversation again. Like you know, Logan McDonald, did he rush it? Uh, but no, yeah. um, kicked it too hard. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. It's too casual, really, Logan. But you know, there's a redemption arc for the Swans now, and for him. But um, Logan McDonald, who is <laughs> right now? Yeah. You know, the the thing is, there is uh if Australia does have its tail between the legs for not winning every single trophy, uh, it is there is some solace at the fact that um, you know, there there is another World Cup in two years' time, which yes. is actually the biggest gap between World Cups over the next six years. Yeah. Uh, so this is the biggest gap we're ever going to have. Yeah. Uh, and when's it went after that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's so so in 2026, uh, the the T20 World Cup will happen again. It's in Sri Lanka, and I'll just check. Yeah, oh, in India, India, um, okay. where the next T uh, T20 World Cup is, and then in 2027, there's the ODI World Cup in South Africa. In 2028, Australia's hosting a T20 World Cup, I yes. believe. Uh, yeah. And then what? We got a 
a year off, then there's another well, the one. Well, Oli- the Olympics also with 2028. Olympics 2028, so there's a gold medal on offer there. Gold medal. Uh, so there's, just, there's, there's, gold, there's medallions and trophies on offer. And then you would think 2030 to be the next T20 World Cup. World Cup. So, that's, so that's, that's sort of five four, big four ones in four and five, years. five years or something four like that. Five years, yeah, yeah, so we've got a two-year gap yeah. now, um, which I think in, tic- in TikTok terms, that's probably worth about 10 years. Yeah. Right? That's, a, that's a long time. Yeah. And, like, cricket needs to get used to um, – you know, sports saturation. Cr- cricket is trying to saturate itself. Cricket, cricket, and sport now is just like a a toddler who sees their parents talking. You know, parents start uh, have uh, just grab. You know, and this isn't from personal experience at all. But yeah, the no. parents parents grab five seconds to themselves, and the toddler just comes up and goes, "Ah, get in your face!" Because I don't like this. Yeah, your attention's on something else. Love that. Cricket and sport are toddlers. We're going to talk to Dan Bridig in a moment's time, but before then, yes, we need yeah. to thank. Our dear friends at Budgie Smuggler, and, uh, and we've got some new, we've got some new kit. Yes, which is actually could which we, is we, seasonally we, appropriate. We fa- flagged this. Whoa, did we? Last week. What did we do? We flagged. We flagged this it last week with um, a cigarette. Exact, exactly. Uh, uh, we 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 knew there were hoodies on their way, and I am genuinely um, like I'm surprised and delighted. Which you'd think I would say given that this is a sponsor arrangement but I, this mm. is, I am receiving a hug Th- this is this is warm this is a uh, you know when like, like you know when you get a fresh hoodie as well yeah. and it hasn't been washed yet hasn't been in the washing machine yeah. and so like it's so soft underneath yeah. this is actually this is, like a hug it really is it's also like I, I'm immediately I'm imagining um, being on the couch a fire a, 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 a close friend a partner if you will and I know you will I will and um and cozying up yeah. this is this is a, a little little glass of red wine or whatever you proclaim yeah. may be mm-hmm. beverage wise uh mm-hmm. that that's what this hoodie yeah. evokes and this, this is magnificent. this is this is budgie smuggler who's come from um from you know smugglers uh from from yeah. swimwear swimwear from swimwear to like top end uh, but affordable apparel yeah. and even more affordable given that you can get 23% off this till the end of July now. Oh, so they've sorted it out. Value. They've sorted Using it out. Using the code GRADE, not to be confused with the great cricketers. No, that's, that's uh, That T20 will uh, yes. inspire, as he goes, was talking about, right. grade cricketers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so G-R-A-D-E. Uh, oh, but, but genuinely, this is soft and yeah. nice and yeah. I've enjoyed putting it on. Um. Budgie Smuggler have got behind TDC once again. They obviously mm. uh, kept this operation alive for a couple mm. of years, mm. um, all those years ago, and they've got behind us again. Yeah. And we're just asking for you guys to get behind Budgie. That's and, right. And if they, you love us, you love them. And then they've actually got behind you by mm. giving you 23% off. G-R-A-D-E, grade, 23% off at budgiesmuggler.com. Th- thanks to Budgie Smuggler for getting behind us for the yeah. World Cup, genu- yep. g- like generally. This is our last episode of the of the pod for this block. Mm-hmm. Uh, Budgie Smuggler just came in, uh, knocked everybody else out and said we want to be part of it. And like uh, Honestly, if you've, if you've enjoyed TJC's content, the best thing you can do from our perspective is to back this great Australian company. Uh, 23% off the apparel as well. Hoodies, socks, undies. Sorry. Sorry. Get out of here. G-R-A-D-E. Here's Dan Bredig. Always a pleasure to catch up with Age Chief Cricket Writer Dan Bredig. DB, uh, thanks for joining us from your home in Ballarat there. Uh, let's let's kick off with the fallout for the Australian men's team from the T20 World Cup. We've been spending too much time already talking about, you know, other nations. We must, you know, get our heads back yeah. into our own little bubble. Yeah. Uh, are we now expecting generational change <laughs> across the T20 side, the white ball side, the test side, uh, I know that most of Australia is watching and talking about Logan McDonald's miss, uh, V Freer over the weekend. <laughs> but in the in the corridors of Jollymont, which I know you like to hang out in, is there uh, you know is is there a sense of change afoot? Uh, definitely on a T Twenty specific level, I'd say. I think the um, if you just look at the the simple kind of um, uh, signpost of next world cups not until 2026 um there's going to be more change to the australian t20 side uh how much that you know how radical that is uh probably depends a little bit on um you know the extent to which some of the established players who are multi-format players um now want to concentrate on test cricket um, and you know we've already heard people like Mitchell Stark say that that is this that is the format he wants to hang around in for the longest. So then it's simply a calculation of well, what other matches, what other formats do you drop in order to play as long as Stuart Broad or James Anderson, basically. Uh, but then you know 
I look at the Australian campaign for this World Cup and I think, well, the bench strength that they had, Josh Inglis, Cameron Green, Nathan Ellis, I think there was opportunity there to use those guys more frequently in the tournament that we've just had. And I think had they done that at the right times, um, maybe we are not talking about them being eliminated eliminated in the Super 8s. It's that, it's that tension between having a settled side and injecting um, some players who've not only got a specific role to play, but, yeah, a little bit to prove, a little bit of aspiration. Um, and I think if you look at the Australian side that played the World Cup in India in the 50-over game last year, probably more through um, accident than through and through circumstances than through purely sort of planning and management, they had a really nice mix there. You know, you had Josh Inglis came into the side, you had Manus Labuschagne fighting and scrapping to make the team and be basically the last player picked. Um, you had uh, guys, yeah, like Marcus Stoinis, Cameron Green, kind of on the on the fringes of it as well. So you, you had a sort of a, a, a nice kind of mixture of, as I say, the established and the aspirational, and I think that's probably what they need to, to look at for the T20 team. And obviously David Warner going out, Jake Fraser McGurk coming in, um, that's one obvious one. Um, and, yeah, there should be, uh, I imagine, a few more by 2026. Don't you think, like, I mean, Australia are very calm about this exit for myriad reasons, I would suggest, the Australian public. But um, my problem is, in terms of getting those guys that you just mentioned, the, the squad players into the actual 11. So let's talk about Nathan Ellis, for instance, who I think everyone around Australia accepts that he's a very, very good T20 player. And you look about the contributions the other three quicks made into the World Cup, right, DB? They, you know, like... Cummins gets two hat tricks. Um, Hazelwood's last game, he finishes with one for fourteen off four. Stark has obviously just won the IPL. Uh, wickets in the power play, yeah, he was a bit more hit and miss than the others, perhaps. But I find that it's difficult because their ceilings, those the, like the the big three, their ceilings are so much higher than Nathan Ellis's. But when one of them doesn't perform, you like Nathan Ellis should have played that game. But then Nathan Ellis's ceiling doesn't get to be high enough because he's not playing enough games. So I guess what I'm asking is like. When would when would when would they have rotated the squad because they basically needed to win every game? So you're kind of going to rely on the guys again, aren't you? Yeah, I think um, in terms of you know tactical decisions or conditions based decisions, uh, the Afghanistan game is obviously going to be poured over a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but you know when I look at the skill set that Nathan Ellis has, I think he is potentially as effective a slow or variable pitch bowler as certainly as another spin bowling option, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, one of the things that he has proven himself to be very good at is that he's not very predictable. He's hard to pin down if you're a batter, basically. And uh, those kinds of, of skills, I think, were were very important in the in the conditions that they faced in that game. And also to an extent in the game against India, which you know, looking at the tournament as a whole, uh, I don't think Australia wanted to be uh, going into that game needing to needing to win it. They wanted to get qualified for the semi-finals against Afghanistan. They'd had two close games against Afghanistan in the last two World Cups, both you know narrow wins in Adelaide in 22 and the Glenn Maxwell miracle last year. Uh, it looked to me a little bit like they overthought the team for that game. Um, and that then had flow-on effects for India. But going back to the whole idea of of the, I suppose, the squad balance and and the um, and the way that the team played out, it's uh, it's just interesting to me that yeah, this T Twenty side has been pretty um, has been pretty established, pretty settled since winning the Twenty Twenty One World Cup, which was done without much expectation, mm. was also done in quite as you would remember, quite, I guess you'd say, consistent, even sterile conditions in the UAE where everyone kind of knew what the what the conditions were going to be on a given day, on a given night. A World Cup in Australia in 2022 and the World Cup we've just had in the USA and the Caribbean, much more variable conditions that actually kind of um, required a higher range of skill that you would think should have suited Australia's sort of multi-format players or test players uh, as it did some of the, you know, top quality players from India, for example. Um, but it didn't play out that way. So, 
uh, those are some of the questions I think they've got to, um, as an Australian, you know, selection panel coaching group need to need to ask themselves in terms of, well, we've gone down a path of sort of using our multi-format players for T20, but they haven't actually come up trumps in variable conditions where you'd hope that like someone who's got test quality would be able to. So uh, that's not to say I certainly don't have any answers for that, but those are just some of the questions I think they should be looking into. You mentioned the selection panel there, DB. I mean, I think it's fair to say that given Australia are probably two wins away from owning every trophy in men's and women's cricket, that over the last couple of years, the selectors are entitled to take a curtain call for those that they've selected. And uh, a big part of that has been continuity, and continuity is bred when you win, right? And I think that on this occasion, Australia has a fairly senior side, closer to veterans than uh, than youth. You know, the, the team and the guys that they trust – uh, were entitled to that trust because they won the last 50 over World Cup or last white ball World Cup, I suppose. I know the formats are different, but Australia has been trading on the idea of uh, big game players against a lot of other teams who se- team- seem to come unstuck under pressure. Now that uh, Australia themselves have come unstuck with that veteran-styled side, do you think that that team loses its capital now and that the selectors have a big decision to make around whether they take an ideology uh, of regeneration, you know? Like, do you think that there are tough calls coming up for some players? I know Hazelwood came out the other day in the press and said, uh, you know, it'll be more... He's envisaging more of a slow change. What to, To what extent do you think players who've won so much but lost this World Cup will be able to dictate their exits? And to what extent do you think Bailey, Dottermaid and McDonald... Uh, might be tapping a few guys on the shoulder to um, commence that regeneration because if you let the players just decide when they want to go, they could all just go at one time and Australia has essentially borrowed against its future. Mm -hmm. I think there's a balance to be struck between, I guess, the the panel being pretty consultative, which they are at the moment, um, but also, you know, you can have a conversation with a player about their international career, but it's nuanced by format. So in terms of, you know, if you, if you talk Cummins, Hazelwood, Stark, for instance, their greatest value to Australian cricket, particularly the way that Australian cricket sees itself and is kind of strategically um, arrayed is in test cricket. Mm. So surely the, 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 the greatest value proposition for both the players and the selectors is to ensure that those guys are at their best for test match assignments for as long as possible. Um, If that means that some give and take needs to be had, some negotiation about um, players giving up formats or selectors saying, okay, you've, you've had enough of T20 cricket playing for Australia here. um, I think that's the, that's the space in which, you'd hope they can have constructive conversations because they have built up relationships over the last few years in terms of discussing things with players rather than dictating terms in terms of you're playing, you're not playing, um, you know, five nil left off to use your, <laughs> your guys nomenclature from a few years ago. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's, um, I mean, it is, a, it is definitely a challenge for the players and the selectors to, you know, under this, you know, new post-Langer paradigm that they um, have set up together, um, is it going to be strong enough to withstand conversations about phasing players out of formats and regenerating the team in that uh, in that way? And look, you know, if, if you if you take one example, uh, the Steve Smith opening in Test cricket um, mm. example is one of those kind of facets. And, uh, you know, as we know, jury's still very much out on that, whether that's been the right move both for Smith and the team. So uh, I'd say the relationships are there to have those difficult conversations, but they've still got to be had. 
Do you reckon, DB, that the nation is ready for a drop-off in T20 cricket uh, quality? Um, because I'm looking at like who else is going to fill the fill the void of these spots that might come up, opportunities. Now, these guys I'm going to mention, excellent cricketers. Xavier Bartlett, exciting start. Cameron Green, high ceiling. We all know that. Nathan Ellis, we spoke about before. Spencer Johnson, um, you know, played some games in the IPL. Exciting prospect. But, like, that's, 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 a, that's a drop-off from what we've got, right? And... And if World Cups are going to be every eight minutes, as they are, and there's, there's several more for the next decade, um, how do we how do we get how do we get like more games into these guys when the big bash is let's be honest a third or fourth tier competition, you know, and that's where most of the Australians see these guys perform. It's like, well, how come these guys are leading run score in the big bash? It's like, well, it's quite a big gap between that and international cricket, right? So, do, like, do you think that there's going to be a drop off from the Australian team? Uh. There's definitely the prospect of that happening. I mean, if you think about, um, say, to throw another name into the mix, Glenn Maxwell, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's a in certainly in white ball terms, that's a, a, a talent that we're we're not going to see the like of for for many years to come. So, um, and I'm not purely talking about his batting. I'm talking about his um, his abilities in the field, what he was able to do with the ball. Um, I would have liked to have seen him get a bowl in that game against India, if I'm honest. Um, I think, you know, someone like Rahit Sharma probably would have liked the fact that he didn't have to be asked a a question by Glenn as he was in the World Cup final last year. So uh, when you're talking about guys like that going out, of course, there's an unknown as to as to how good the guys are going to be Mm. coming in. But um, there's really no option but to. Um, but to find out and, um, you know, how you find out whether it's sort of completely wiping the slate clean in terms of reselecting the, the, the squad, I don't think that's what they're going to do. But at some point, the, the switch needs to be flicked from we've got these established guys, we're going to go with them to we're going to start um, – moving some guys out to to give greater opportunities and you know you talk about the big bash i mean um someone like matt short mm-hmm. probably needs an extended run of games in the australian t20 side someone like jake fraser mcgurk i mean he's he's an example of someone who was struggling in the big bash for a couple of years with the right sort of um with the right attitude, the right coaching, a change of of states, uh, he was then able to produce on the IPL stage things that I wouldn't have thought a number of people in, within Australian cricket would necessarily have expected from him. Certainly not in his first first go at it. So you don't know. There could be players who perform better than you think they're going to based on their on their current domestic records. DB, you mentioned uh, Australia's priority essentially being Test cricket. Uh, for the next couple of years, and I'd suggest that that's uh, that's at odds with a lot of other nations as well. But uh, trying to zero it in on this World Cup in particular, uh, I was keen for your take on the you know the water cooler conversation about, and and people are having this conversation around the water coolers that they yes. installed in their offices and homesteads, but uh, Australia's the Australian public's interest in this World Cup being at an all-time low. Uh, I'm going to quote one of uh, or two of your colleagues in a rival um, rag. This is from uh, Benny Horn and Shannon Gill. Cricket has pocketed a few extra dollars by selling its World Cup to Amazon Prime, but it's paying a high price for doing so. Um, I don't want to focus so much on the Amazon Prime side of things. If you want to, you can. But... Uh, do you agree that interest in this World Cup in Australia was at an all-time low? Um, did no one know DB, or did no one care? Uh, how, how do you what, what's what's your overall view of of how Australia's taken this in? Uh, well, I think one of the things that is um, scary, in a way, for anyone sort of involved in Australian cricket um, in whatever role, is that. It's almost worse than than knowing that the um, audience was small. Is that you don't know? Like there's no the, the, there's because of the way that um, uh, that Prime operates. There's really no um, uh, audience data that's publicly available about what the size of the audiences uh, for the games was. Um, now you also add to that the fact that 
Um, it's in the middle of winter. It's not on established, um, I suppose you'd say, sport or cricket broadcasters in Australia. Um, all of those things contribute to uh, a sense of, um, yeah, a, a sense of a bit of a hole opening up where the, where the World Cup should have been. Um, that being said, um, yeah, it's, you know, the, the process over the last few years has been so much, not just within, you know, Cricket Australia and the States, but also a lot of the, I suppose you say, the commercial partners of Australian cricket and certainly the broadcast partners. The elevation of test cricket means that, um, yeah, white ball cricket and white ball um, World Cups, certainly the T20 variety, like um, they're just, they're, they, are, um, they are kind of second order. Um, and even if you think about the, I guess, the way that um, the uh, the rights ended up going to Prime, you know, that's the International Cricket Council multinational organisation um, going to market in a bunch of individual territories, which was a di- which was a difference from previous deals. So previously, you would. Um, see those rights go for sale as a collective, which would be bought by one entity, you know, which has been, you know, Disney Star um, a couple of times. Disney Star or their, you know, assorted agents would then on sell the rights in other territories. This was very different. This meant the ICC were directly negotiating with broadcasters in Australia, asking for more money than they maybe previously had asked for from a... Uh, from a Foxtel or a Channel 9 or a Channel 7. And, um, yeah, the the outcome was that uh, the rights holder that was prepared to pay the most money had the smallest footprint in Australia relative to what we'd been used to. So all of those things contribute. Um, and But as I say, I think the, the uncertainty about what the audience size was is almost more um, uh, troubling than knowing that it was knowing that it was it was a certain number even if that's a bad number um you know it's uh it's a it's a lack of safety as far as uh, world cups <laughs> are concerned for australia <laughs> yeah, i don't i don't think uh it's it's quite industry standard isn't it for a lot of these uh platforms to retain their to keep their numbers kind of uh commercial in confidence right i mean i would have thought that um it uh, if if we were going to attribute any culpability for this this world cup being on a platform that punters are unfamiliar with that it would be more towards the ICC selling it there right I mean if one platform irrespective of your views on any of the media entities involved um, uh, stumps up as it says in this article here 30% more money then uh, you know the question has to go to the ICC of why why they would sell it to a, a group that has a really small footprint right well the ICC sold it to the entity that was prepared to pay the highest price because the ICC's responsibility to its members, including Cricket Australia, is to generate as much money as possible from the sale of those rights, which is then dispersed to the members. So in that calculation, there's not really a element of, well, you know, if we, um, yeah, if we sell it to the highest bidder with a smaller audience share, there's going to be a flow on effect for cricket in that country. Like, you know, it's the same as, um, why there's this sort of, you know, dual negotiation for the domestic rights in Australia whenever they come around with both free-to-air and pay because if it's all on pay, you'll get more money but you have a smaller audience. If it's all on free, you'll have a bigger audience or at least at the moment but obviously the way things are evolving, the market is changing. Um, but you get a lot less money. So it's the – but. The, um, the way that those rights were negotiated, it was more about delivering dollar figures, which could then be redistributed to the members. So to me, it kind of feels like it's it's a little bit of a, you know, what's the strategic good for, this, for World Cups on Prime to Australian cricket? It's sort of a question that slipped through the cracks of a commercial negotiation. Can I posit something to you, Dan, in that here's a dirtier secret. I think some of these games could have been on, um, they could have been streamed onto my phone with a notification saying this game is happening right now and I think there's a truth that exists which says heaps of people don't care 
about this format in Australia. And I think there's myriad reasons for that. Lots of people do care about it. Let's be right about that. But there was literally a World Cup in Australia two years ago when there was no football on in our time zones mm. and fucking no one gave a shit. <laughs> and that's the truth. So um, I do think oh, everything you've said is right as far as I'm concerned. And therefore it's true because I think it's so. Um, but like, <laughs> is, is there a dirtier secret to be told that Australians might have given this one a bit of a miss either way? It's definitely the case that outside of test cricket um, and even outside of certain test cricket, uh, you know, the following of cricket in Australia is very seasonal in nature. So, uh, you know, the, the number of um, casual supporters or followers of cricket, of which there are many in Australia, and it's one of the big strengths of Australian cricket, that there are so many people who are casually interested as opposed to a bunch of ultras and then a bunch of people who don't care at all. Mm. Um, the seasonal nature of that means that, yeah, a a World Cup in a format where there's a World Cup every second year uh, that is the newest format of cricket, which, you know, a lot of a lot of cricket lovers, whether casual or ultra, would still have a, you know, cultural issue with in terms of it's not real cricket. Um, all of that comes together with the time of the year, with the... Um, with the other things going on with is it worth our budget of a week to have a prime subscription at the moment? Mm -hmm. All of those things, I think, contribute. Uh, and, you know, it actually becomes a case of, well, to get the attention of the Australian population in, in cricket terms at that time of the year, the players have got to do something extraordinary. You know, like if you think about even the World Cup in India last year, I, th I don't think people were really paying attention until Glenn Maxwell, Afghanistan. And even then. <laughs> well, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, and similarly, that 2022 World Cup, that felt flat in the absence of some extraordinary performances by the Australian team to elevate its profile at a time when people are, basically recovering from the footy season and just slowly warming into into cricket. I mean, it's it's absolutely clear that the better time, the better sort of shoulder period of the year to have a World Cup in Australia is February, March, after there's been a summer of people following cricket and having an idea that it's on. So, yeah, I think the seasonal rhythms of Australian cricket and that big casual audience, as I said, um, yeah, they don't translate well to um, a T20 World Cup on the US time zone in June. And also with a lot of those games being played on a um, on an ideal time zone for India, mm. but not one for Australia. Yeah. I was gonna tack an extra question on here, Dan, because I think you're, I think listeners and viewers of this show uh, would know that we've uh, kind of traversed this topic regularly because it keeps coming up. But if we accept what you say there, and I, I do, that. The Australian audience, uh, if you were going to characterise the demographic of cricket followers, is casual, seasonal and test cricket loving. And that the entire trend of global cricket is saturated, uh, um, non-time zone specific T20 cricket and that that divergence is only growing. D does Australian cricket, is Australian cricket looking at a problem around its ability to... Um, take its fans along with the trend of the game as it is um, led by uh, the BCCI and India? There's definitely an issue in terms of Australia being able to, I suppose, exert an influence to encourage enough other countries to preserve and want to play test cricket and want to play test cricket well, both at home and away. Um, and so, you know, if Australian cricket doesn't have enough strong opposing nations to play, you will start to see problems in that, you know, even in that peak of summer where a lot of people are invested in and engaged with cricket. And so, you know, on one level, Cricket Australia needs to stay close to the BCCI, obviously, and with an uh, India test tour coming up uh, this summer, um, you know, that's that's sort of, you know, P 
peak time for that relationship, really. Um, but at the same time, yeah, needing to kind of work to try to nurture cricket in other countries and not just 2020 cricket in other countries. I mean, South Africa is a, is a fascinating example of this kind of, of, of dilemma, really, if you think about um, what's happened with their test cricket in recent years, but also the fact that, um, you know, all of the SAT20 teams are owned by IPL conglomerates. The tournament itself is uh, part owned by Supersport. It's also part owned by uh, Sundaram and the, you know, long-time uh, BCCI uh, operational figure and strategic figure. Um, you know, those things have contributed to South Africa being able to get a strong T20 league up and running. Probably has helped their team ahead of this World Cup. You know, they 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 had more of an emphasis on T20, and lo and behold, they're in a they're in a World Cup final. Um, but that's obviously got a cost as far as their Test cricket is concerned. And what's the most important thing about us, about South Africa as far as Cricket Australia is concerned? It's getting a strong test team to play in Australia in the, you know, in basically in one summer out of four and be the be the second or third or sorry, be the third or fourth strongest team that we play in Australia after India and England. So uh yeah, that that's a that's a real dilemma as far as um where the sort of the sweep of global cricket is going versus what Australian cricket needs out of other countries. Mm. Brady, always great to have you on for some X's and O's industry chat. Um, as is often said to us on Twitter, interesting times ahead. Uh, <laughs> mate, thank, By thanks. X's and O's, you mean kisses and hugs, do you? Or? Um, oh, yes, please, Dan. <laughs> yes, please. Never thought you'd ask. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks so much for coming on, mate. We'll catch you next time. Cheers, boys. Thank you very much to DB for his time. And his thoughts and his brain. Let's talk about the uh, the England squad for the West Indies, Pezza. Uh, here are the names uh, that are playing in the squad. <laughs> here are the names that are playing in the squad. What the fuck am I talking about? Oh, I think it applies to both of us, this show. Ben Stokes, Crawley, Matt Potts, Anderson for the first test, of course. Duckett, Root, Gus Atkinson, Dan Lawrence, Jamie Smith is a wicket keeper, Shoal Bashir, Dylan Pennington, Chris Wokes, Harry Brook, Ollie Pope. So obviously Jimmy Anderson's final test. So there's no folks, Bairstow, Leach, Wood, or Robinson. Josh Tung, Jamie Overton, and Sam Cook are all injured. Or the other Ollie Robinson as well. Yes, Keeper. who yeah, is uh, in and around mm. the group or mm. uh, in the mix. So Jamie Smith is the keeper for Surrey, who's had a decent season. Um, so has Ben Folks. So has Ben Folks. yeah. In fact, sorry, Ben Folks is the keeper. Jamie Smith is not the keeper. He's just he's batting. He's a white ball keeper. Yes. Yeah. Um, so once again, no folks. Um, that for me That's is that for me is more interesting than Besto Leach Wood or Robinson missing out. I mean, I, I just so what are you? Having a, what are you be having a break? He'll be having a spell. Well, yeah, yeah. So put him just just let him sit in the stables for a while. I, feedback. Stuff. I couldn't find information about Leach why he's not in the squad, but Bashir is. Um, I think they've just gone show Bashir. They've just gone show Bashir, but I, but. That's just the way they've all gone. In, all in on show Bashir. Uh, Ollie Robinson, interesting one, um, but. Uh, not not included in this. Uh, in they this don't sport. like it. They don't like it anymore. He's bowled okay in the county championship as oh, well, okay. and he's also usually pretty good at home. Uh, you know, notwithstanding polarizing views about the personality, which happens in sport, it happens right. But it just in raw raw numbers and performance still pretty good. I think there must be concerns about the fitness, yep. and there must be concerns about the package. Do you know what I think is? <laughs> do you know what I think as well? I I like it. Uh, so in terms of, I like that they've not included it in the in the Bert Newton stars <laughs> because <laughs> because look, Ollie Robinson, his record speaks for itself. It's it's good. It's a good record. Mm -hmm. um, I think they need to pick players that can win games of cricket in Australia, and that's I what, that's what and, this is. and I just don't think that he can do that. And the I same, think that that's what this is because he because he is now. Interesting enough, Chris Wokes is, is in the squad, and mm -hmm. Chris Wokes. I, in my opinion, just shouldn't go to Australia. I just don't, don't see the value in it. Kookaburra doesn't work for him. Mm. Um, I think that's his opinion too, to be fair. Yep. Mm. Uh, so, but it's interesting because Ollie Robertson was kind of kind of the guy that was um, that was flagged as um, as the guy well that said. was going to um, take over the leadership role from when Anderson and Broad retired. Obviously, they are now both about to be uh, out of the side. And uh, the Chris, leader of the attack, the leader of the attack. Yeah. yeah. And now it seems that Chris Wokes is that guy. Now Chris Wokes was out of the squad up until midway through the Ashes series last year when he came in. Then I've been busy played the series. Chris Wokes, he might have been. 
might have. I think yeah. he might have been after yeah. missing the first after two games. Sup. So, Can't I mean, Chris sup. Wokes is up there for me as mm. maybe the one of the best home cricketers ever. Jadeja be up there. Not the worst. Not the worst thing to be. And anyway. Lo- lovely man. Oh, sorry. That, that wasn't a sledge. I'm just saying no. like how good he is at home. Um, uh, Gus Atkinson, wheels. Um, mm. I don't know anything about Dylan Pennington. Um, but um, And but, we reserve the but, right. But, but, but Potts we like. There's, there's, something, there's something there with Potts for sure. Uh, and Josh Tung played, uh, I think he thought he played a K in, um, in the Ashes, especially in the first Test match. Uh, that game. He, he, he was really impressive in that game. But, um, but no folks. I mean, that's just, that's just a snub. That's just – I don't understand it because, like, it's, its record was – its record yeah, was no, – no, yeah, yeah. Its record with yeah. the bat was as good as Bairstow in Test cricket. Not, not as many hundreds, to be fair. Not given as many chances. But I think the strike rate unders. But the gloves are up there with the best in the world. And – to, to leave him out is just saying like, no, nah, just it's not what we're looking for, and that's it says something about the uh, the selectorial regime of the England side under uh, McCullum Stokes Key. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> you know, th- I think that that prism of can this person do it for us in Australia with what we'll need. I mean, I, I think the the Test squad is now being reshaped and geared towards that obsession and. Uh, you know, that is probably what they will be mm. judged by anyway. So, like, they look at Ben Folks and they probably go, oh, look, I haven't seen this Jamie Smith guys, but as far as I understand, you know, there's good whispers about him. As, 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 a, lot. as a player of class, okay. uh, as a player with an edge, you know, as a player with flair. He strikes at 58 in the county championship in yeah, his career. But like, Sorry, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a whispers, he's a whispers and potential guy. And, yep. you know, at, like, surely that – Appeals to a McCullum and a Stokes. It's oh, like, totally! Yeah, I, yeah, I can yeah. like it's like Shell Bashir. There's a lot of guys like this. Like I can see the, um, I can see the mechanics of it. I can see the overall package of it. Maybe it's not together, but it w- let's get him into our setup and let's see what we can mould it into. And the ceiling is higher. I'm I'm not um, defending it. I'm just trying to yeah, yeah. get into the shoes of uh, ex- explaining what might be sitting behind it. That, and perhaps they look at Ben Folks and go, uh, has um, you know, like is very uh, serviceable to a level, but we need more and we need a higher ceiling. Now, the, yep. the looks, obviously, higher ceiling available yes. in, in cricket. Yep. But, uh, you know, th- these these guys are like, you know, they, they, this, this triumvirate are like, they're, they're maverick, they're cavalier. They want a side that can come and um, really, like, um, surprise and blow away Australia. And Well, I, I like cricketer. that. To be, to be honest, I like that. I mm. like that idea because... Um, as much as why I like not? Ben, folks, yeah, we yeah, why not? And maybe maybe they maybe they are right if they are thinking mm. in the way you've just described. Ceiling cricketers. Maybe that's the only way to go about it because they haven't won a game here, and by the time they come here, 12, 13 years is mm. that right? Is that, yeah. how, is that what it would have worked out to be? I mean, it's just and not even competed in one. I mean, mm. they obviously saved the game at the SCG last time round. Uh, Jimmy Anderson blocking out against Steve Smith bowling, I think it might have been that's right. uh, on day five. But uh, apart from then, a couple of whitewashes and then four nil. So it hasn't been competitive. So I, I'm, I'm for the, mm. let's just fucking go for ceilings. I like mm. that idea. Um, anyway, uh, Jimmy Anderson's last test match, of course, coming up. Uh, and that'll be a sad farewell because it's just been one of the all time great careers. No question about that. Yeah. It, you know, in many ways, like LeBron esque in terms of its longevity is just, mm. it's just incredible. 2003's first game. Yeah. I mean, the, and the lineage of like who is, who his career like touches, you yeah. know, like yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's, it's just phenomenal. It starts to tick, it, it, you start ticking off thinking yeah. about the longevity and what it means. Yeah. Hopefully that final game is like, you, you, you know, you've, a, li- a green tinge on the Lord's deck, yeah. overcast conditions. Goes past England, England's bowl, oh, oh, it's whatever. It's going to hurt. England, England bowls first, uh, <laughs> you know, and, you, and, he, yeah. and he has the the raucous crowd behind him, mm. and they can get raucous at Lord's if they want to. If they want if to, you tick yeah. them off in the right yeah. way. Oh, the certain the certain kind of personalities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah, the certain personalities. They're playing the windies. <laughs> Uh, and I read that Rocky Flintoff hit 100 playing for the England 19s last That's week. There you go. More That's lineage. Nice. More lineage stuff. Get yeah. him in. Ceiling. He's got a brother. He plays with Lancashire. Ka- Corey? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, mate. Allegory? Do, <laughs> it is one of my favourite genres of uh, like sports conversation. And I do I do list my genres in a spreadsheet. Corey Flintoff. But, uh, yep. you know, the idea that like a, a, a kid comes through mm-hmm. and then somebody's side-mouthing. You should see his brother even better. Oh yeah, what's well, like, like what's the brother it? hasn't come through. The brother's twelve. Yeah, it's like Bronny and Bryce James. Yeah, exactly. Oh, mate, Bryce. Yeah, wait, Bryce it's Bryce like Na- Nathan Cleary, you know, and his and his brother Jet. Mm-hmm. Oh, mate, wait till Jet comes through, mate. Yeah. You haven't seen anything yet. Yeah. Okay, sure, mate. Hey, I've got a mortgage to pay. 
<laughs> do we have time to, to, to move the show along? Or yeah, uh, um, we okay. do. We do. Okay, time. okay. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about uh, the in India and South Africa women's test in Chennai, which a lot of people were very keen for us to talk about uh, before day three happened. So this is a four-day test match, and I'm giving these scores at the end of day three. So India batted first and made 603 for six declared. They were the first women's team to ever surpass 600. Australia made 570, I think it was, once in the Ashes. But uh, Shafali Verma made 205. Uh, Smriti Mandanar made 149. Harman Preet Kaur, 69. Jemima Rodriguez, 55. And then Rika Ghosh made 86 off 90 balls, batting at, what's that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Must be nice. Um, South Africa were then bowled out for 266, thanks to Snay Rana's 8 for 77. Uh, top scores were Soon Luce, who made 65, and then Marazan Cap, who made 74. So then South Africa were then forced to follow on, and they currently 232 for two. So currently in the game, uh, after three days of play, there have been 18 wickets in three days. Tough going there on the old Chennai deck. It's Laura Woolvart is on 93 red off 252 balls, and Soon Luce, who made runs in the first innings, made 109 uh, before she was bowled, uh, of 203 balls. Uh, so that's what's happened in that game. So day four is happening nearly as we re- uh, start recording this. Um, but uh, women's test matches, good. We're all for that. We support that. Uh, tough old deck for the bowls, I would have thought. 18 poles in three days. So you right. We had, uh, we had, a, had a couple of – actually, the five-day test match in the Ashes, the women's Ashes this time around was actually a belter. I think mm. it was going to day five at Trent Bridge, was it? They needed 150 runs, five wickets in hand. Uh, England were chasing, that is, 150 wickets. And then um, that was the game where Ash Gardner took eight. Eight. And yeah, then she also took the 12 for the She took yeah. 12 for the match. Eight plus four, 12. Normal stuff, normal stuff. So runs deluxe in Chennai is what I'm saying. Um, anything you want to add there? No. I think you summed it up well. Okay, well, this is going to be a tough segue. People had a stick. This episode is brought to you by friends over at Manscaped, TM. <laughs> like to call Fresh Ball Fall. Introducing the mm. Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming are here to make sure that your foliage isn't the only thing shedding its excess leaves. Make sure to trim your bush with the best and let Mother Nature do the rest. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, TM, by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code... TGC. Remember, lads, when you trim the weeds, the tree always stands taller. Now, we understand, we understand that the code TGC for some hasn't worked. But on the t- Australian side. On the Australian site. We got in contact with Manscaped and we said, mm. hey, fucking sort it out. Mm. Just like you're asking me to sort out my foliage. Yeah. Did them a deal. I'll, so, so, I'll sort out my foliage yeah. so the tree stands taller. If you can sort out the fucking code that mm. you've given to us so we can sort out 20% off plus free shipping, okay? That's the fucking deal, Manscaped, TM. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's enjoyed that. He liked that, yeah. Anyway, so if you have problems, get in contact with us. But the code is TGC, manscaped.com, 20% off, free shipping. Maybe now's the time. Your summer body starts now, Pezza. Oh, that's sure, it might be July Ain't that first. <laughs> that should be in the Hall of Fame, I would have thought. Surely. <clears throat> Is you, how, how are you standing? I mean, yeah, you, yeah you, good. Well, you've got, you've got like, naturally, got? well, we know that you're engaged now and you'll spend that's a true. period of your life being a fiancé, which yes. is great. Yes, yes. Uh, so and keep my fiance's na- name out of your, out fucking, your mouth. fucking mouth. Of course, yeah. of course, of course. I would never do that. But uh, <laughs> yeah. you'll be um, healthily considering your rig, right? I mean, that's just a natural thing. You yeah, for, great, for a great rig as it is for the big dance. Yeah, for the big dance. Perhaps the last dance. You'd hope so. Well, that's the intention. I don't want to get in trouble with Michael Jordan. Are you getting a prenup? <laughs> We want prenup. <laughs> All that TGC rupee bunts. Yeah, that, that's right. She's after me podcast money. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from me rupees, babe. <laughs> uh, babe. Yeah, but I suppose Manscaped would be part of that for you. I'd imagine it'd be part of the regime on the day, on the big day, <laughs> on the big dance. Hopefully your last one. The last dance. My last series win <laughs> was also my wedding. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it'd have to be part of the routine for sure, yeah. Yep. That's right. I, I've, been, <laughs> I've been watching... Uh, Here we go. 
are you familiar with Colin from Accounts, the uh, yes. TV show? Yes. Do you yes. watch it? No. There's this whole period in like the second season where um, the the female lead, um, who in real life is, is married to the male lead. Um, yeah. She hot. They're both, both, both actors are attractive. Oh, that's uh, good. Yeah. And uh, – yeah, for a period like I've only I'm only a few episodes in, but like she's just very mu- like the the, the character like the character uh, the male character the male lead is like um oh, is yeah. is he's gone through a lot in his life and he's like he's 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 trying to develop responsibility in his life and mm. she's essentially interrogating his history you know at all costs and times and she's basically up to the point where it's just like they're they're at a they're having a body count conversation <laughs> and he's done numbers. Are they bulk? Yeah, and he he's so you know he's so like he's such a lovely person. I and see. Not I reformed. See. He's just a very gentle man. Okay, okay. But he's he can't he doesn't really remember. <laughs> and his brother's there. Like she's got like ten, twenty. And he's just going. Yeah, I, I, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. You know, body count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a terrible term. Yeah, I remember. Um, corpse. Uh, I remember. <laughs> I remember there was someone at our club, uh, who you know as well. Who um, he was living. Beneath one of the selectors at the club, it's a bench. <laughs> <laughs> it was a park bench, That's right? And he had newspapers. His over newspaper him. was his blanket. <laughs> he had the North Shore Times, and he used to wear it over him. Anyway, I remember, uh, I remember him coming to training. The selector, and he's like, "Oh." So and so was just committing absolute murder upstairs last night. Oh, goodness <laughs> me! <laughs> yeah, good times. Anyway, Manscaped TJC is the code twenty percent off mm. plus free shipping. Manscaped dot com. The man committing murder may have been watching it on a VPN. <laughs> As Maybe in dramatized murder, not, <laughs> yeah. not, 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 not real life. <laughs> I mean, you probably could get that on VPN too. Sick stuff, dark web. But if you want to go there, NordVPN.com forward slash TGC. You can grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to the custom URL in the episode show notes, show notes to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four months for free. It's completely risk free. With Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee, nordvpn.com forward slash TGC. That is the tracking link. If you don't know what a VPN is for, then don't get one. Yep. Is that the message they want me to send? I mean, I can't I can't possibly well, we go could, through we the We could help end. them know. So by the end of this ad, they know what a VPN is, a virtual private network, right, where you can have all of your internet uh, – you know, consumption <laughs> untraceable. <laughs> you get you, your internet consumption can be untraced, which will appeal to a lot of people listening to this show, especially if they don't know. I think we'd be speaking to some, uh, you know, Gen X boomer type guys yeah. driving around in their cars. What's this VPN? It's like, mate, listen no, up, mate. You, li- listen you need up. one more yeah, than anyone. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Someone's driving a, like a Hilux or something. Yeah. You know. You can go your own way. Those uh, kind of guys yep. going over like rocky, um, yes. un, un, um, kind of sealed roads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and sort of like low-lying water low lying in, in, a, in a creek style situation. Exactly. Creates exactly. a bit of a flurry of waves yeah. from the tyres dispersing right. the water. Beautiful suspension on the car. Yeah, but not, not so much that you get bogged underneath. Exactly. It's sort of, it's sort of uh, elicits adventure, yeah. a getaway. That's right. Being connected with nature and I the land. I can go places that other vehicles can't go. <laughs> right? <laughs> And and they're while they're while they're driving over that uh, that rocky uh, yeah. creaky terrain, yeah. they're listening to us. Go, yeah. What's a virtual private network? Are you talking yeah. about a VPL, a visible yeah. panty no, line? No, <laughs> virtual private network that allows your internet consumption to go untraced. You can look at anything around the world, and it cannot be traced. Uh, it's and it's quite it's quite titillating when you actually go on and you can click. Where you yeah. like your like your IP address to be located? Because it feels like you go on holiday. Yeah. Then I've today never I'm, been to Algeria. Today I'm in Frankfurt. You know, no one will be able to know what I'm doing from my Frankfurt IP address. I can watch it whatever I want. Dramatized murder, real murder, and I can get twenty percent off and a thirty day money back guarantee and four months for free using the code TGC. <laughs> Hashtag ask TGC. Charlie writes in, 
What would you like to read this? No, 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 you go. County, cha- hashtag I said to see county championship first day. Boys, I come to you with a quandary. A close friend of my miso soup is a keen cricket fan, as is his wont. But I had assumed it was limited to the traditionally acceptable forms of cricket noncery in the UK. Brackets, test matches, comma, ODIs, comma, T20s, comma, maybe the odd domestic one-day game if there's literally no other option and you're recovering from minor brain surgery. Close brackets. But alas, I recently found out that he had started dating someone new who is also a cricket fan and their first date took place across two sessions of day three of a county championship match at Lords. Given that there have been subsequent encounters, is it safe to assume that both parties were pleased with the setting for this date and that is great? Gravely concerning for obvious reasons. So my question is simple. Do I need to call the police? (laughs) (laughs) I'd like to say... (laughs) It's not a bad segment. (laughs) Like We could have a new segment of people calling the police on their friends for behaviour. Yeah, and don't don't flood the police lines, actually. Um, (laughs) I'm legitimately concerned that we may... We might have the next Ian Brady, Myra Hindley on our hands... And my sense of civic responsibility is weighing heavily. Congrats to Higos on the engagement. Now, I'm not Thanks, familiar man. with that, with that no. reference. Do you Are know you? Charlie? No. No. Ian Brady, Myra Ian, Hindley. Ian Brady, um, I bet it's going to be good. Uh, Moore's murders. The Moore's murders oh, were carried me. out by Ian Bray, Brady and Myra. Okay. Oh, Should God. Myra Hindley between July 1963 and October 65 in and around Manchester, England. Right. Uh, oh, no, that's sad. Okay. So, uh, so he's suggesting. No, that's no. This is no good. No, no. See you later. See you later. This stuff. Um, I mean, they, they 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 got done for murder and did some heinous stuff, and they got life in prison. So, um, I guess the I guess Charlie is Charlie is concerned that because two other unassuming people went on a date. Oh, I see. At, at a cricket game. championship, they're yeah. going to well. Um, they're going to execute heinous murders right. and, and more, as far as I can oh, say. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Well, you know, I was thinking about this, oh, I, see, see. I was thinking about uh, meeting it, like going on a date to a cricket ground. Okay, first of all, it's a revealing that you like cricket. So revealing you like anything is quite a lot, especially on a first date. But like, but maybe I was, I was actually thinking like, maybe it's actually... A day out, you know, like so. Yeah. Do you think cricket's actually orienting itself? I know, like Sydney Swans are having like singles. It's a, it's a, it's a place for singles to meet and mingle. Wasn't Bumble sponsoring the Swans for a bit? There's some stuff. Is there. that right, Charlie? Bumble? No, no. Okay. Um, I don't think that might have been. Anyway, can, whatever. Can cricket orient itself as a like a well, genuine place for a date between normal people? So I was single during the pandemic for parts of it, and like, um, you went on dates at the Renegades. <laughs> I will, I will. Hey babe, let's I was, go in the buckethead section. No, I was dressed Don't up call as, me babe. I was dressed up as a mascot. <laughs> I'm a renegade. Uh, no, anyway, um, but at the time you had to go on, you know, like walking dates in in the sense of like that was the only place you could meet oh, in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not Get sure what it was you? in Sydney, but um, but um, no, like that was like you had to meet outside, and so I was just thinking, like, to be fair. No one really enjoyed that. Like no, one, like no one really wants your first date to be like broad daylight. You know, you can't be wearing your finest garb, Daniel Garb. And <coughs> so, um, <laughs> I think you're like you're trying I, to talk I, talk to me like you're a normal person yeah, and saying stuff yeah, like that. It ticks off. I can't wear my face. Fa- <laughs> yeah, go yeah. on. Yeah, I think Dan listens to the show, so he okay, probably, shout out. probably 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 appreciates some, <laughs> how much time, how many he times he's lot, uh, yeah. name he gets name checked. Anyway, um. But, yeah, so no one really enjoyed that because, you know, you're never really looking your best at, you know, 10 in the morning. But, like, for a county championship game, you know, like, there's, it's all there for you. The alcohol is available, I think, you know. Like, it's, um, it's uh, you know, you can yeah. get, get outside. You know, it's – it's I mean, if you like cricket, you like it anyway. So, might as well get that out, out of the way. Maybe it's actually a good thing. The problem's the grade level with this because it, it, mm. you take the grade level away from this and there's lots to enjoy about a date at the cricket if both people are consenting parties to it. Yeah. If they like the they, they like the, the vibe and the spirit and the um, environment of, of cricket, like played nicely in England mm. with its uh, with its PIMs and other assorted beverages available, yes. like uh, – then play on between consenting parties. The problem is when if you ever said something like that at a grade game yeah. to your elders or superiors, yeah. you would be regarded as you know something akin to a pedophile or future pedophile. Yes, right. And that's the problem with the grade level. The grade level's yeah. wrong about that. Fucks your or brain. Just exchanging the information yep. about what it would have been. That's all it is. 
Hey, thanks so much for getting behind TJC during this World Cup for this last little bit. Um, as I said at the top of the show, we're taking a little bit of a break uh, from cricket. Although if you want to get cricket, join us on Patreon. Hall of Fame week starts tomorrow. In fact, midnight tonight is when episode one is going to get dropped uh, on your Patreon feed, which goes straight into your Spotify feed or your iTunes feed or however that works there. So that's how we do it. Um, thank you so much for Budgie Smuggler for getting behind us. Thank yeah. you so much for our patrons for getting behind us. Thank you so much for everyone that's liked a video, commented on a video, watched a video, downloaded an audio, Spotify, iTunes, Google, or wherever you consume this stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll be back on your free feeds. For the Olympics starting yeah. in 27 days' time, Something I think like it that, is. Yeah. So stick across our socials, Olympics to come. That's going to be cricket, great fun. Cricket on the free feed, not until we're looking like November. November. Right. So if you want us to talk, if you want us uh, to listen to us talk about cricket, Patreon's the way to do it. But um, mm. thank you so much. What a wonderful little bit it's been. Well done to India for winning the World Cup. We'll see you guys real soon, depending on when you want to see us. Bye.